again, it is I, Derek, from Tomcat Gas Training, and welcome to this video all about these things. Well, more specifically, does a central heating system actually require one of these things? A boiler filter. Anyway, before we get into this video and you're new to the channel, please could you take some time to subscribe, because it does help the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell, because you want YouTube to tell you when I'm uploading videos. Seems to be Sundays at the moment. And don't forget to give us that thumbs up. Anyway, that's enough waffling and begging. So let's get on with it and find out exactly, do we actually require one of these boiler filters? Now then, this video is all about finding out whether we actually do require a filter on our central heating system. And you know me here, I don't just go, yes we do or no we don't. We need to have some hard evidence to find out if we do or we don't need them. So, let's try and find some hard evidence. Now, the first place we could look is the British Standard 7593-2019. So, could this give us some hard evidence? Now, this British Standard 7593 came out in May 2019, and it is the Code of Practice for the Preparation, Commissioning and Maintenance of Domestic Central Heating and Cooling Water Systems. So you can see, it says it's a code of practice. It's not a regulation. But it does give us the best practice to be able to comply with the regulations. So what actually does this say we have to do when we're protecting central heating systems? Now, it basically lays down what processes we need to do to make this system the best system we can. So it says the processes we can do to get this system as clean as we can to protect the boiler and save the environment is, so it says we can do a power flush. So what does it mean by that? Well, actually what it means is we can use a machine. We can either use a power flush machine, which will take the water around the system without the boiler being connected to it. Or we could even use a magnet cleanse where we're using giant magnets to get rid of the magnetite. Or we can use both, we can put them together, but we need to get this water out of the system and the system flushed and cleaned. Now the next one, it says we could use mains pressure. So if our system is reasonably clean, because remember we need to test the water before we actually do the installation, then we could just use the filling loop and the mains pressure of the water coming into the system to be able to flush it all out. And again, it says we could use gravity to clean the system. So if we're draining a system, we could just drain it by gravity and clean the system that way, if obviously the water isn't dirty. And it also says we could use special chemicals. Now, most of, or probably all of the uh, chemical manufacturers who make inhibitor will make a system cleaner as well. And they normally do two or three different types of cleaners depending on whether it's a new uh, system, a dirty system, or just an old system that just needs a flush through. So you could actually use chemicals to do that. And then it says to protect the system after we've flushed and cleaned it, we should be installing a magnetic filter to continue to protect the system while we're waiting for the intervals of servicing. Now, if the British Standard 7593 is a code of practice, is there any regulations what tells us we have to use a magnetic filter, we have to power flush, clean the system and put an inhibitor in? Well, yes, there is. We have part L of the building regulations. So we've got L1A and L1B. L1A is for new buildings and L1B is for existing buildings. And this is for domestic properties. L2A and L2B is for commercial buildings. So we're gonna have a massive changes to the building regs in 2022. It's going to do things like new builds are going to have to reduce its CO2 and its flow temperature from its central heating systems for new builds. We're going to be going down to like 55 degrees instead of 80. So underfloor heating is going to be coming into new builds, hopefully. So these big changes in the building regs, are they going to do anything about filters and stuff like that? Well, yes, because basically the building regs is going to incorporate the British standards. The building regs are regulations 
So we will have to now start installing filters, making sure the system is flushed and cleaned, making sure we put inhibitor in, and making sure that the water quality is checked on every service. Now, why is it important to check the quality of the water in your central heating system? Well, it's for two reasons. One, so we don't get scale buildup, and two, corrosion. So if we quickly look at scale, so scale will be commonly known as lime scale, which is naturally in your water, which can then dissolve your, out of your water in temperatures over 60 degrees onto the surface of your boiler and insulate your boiler and stop you getting all the heat out of the boiler and reducing its efficiency. And then obviously we've got the uh, magnetite and the sludge going around the system. So technically, do we need to use inhibitors? Well, if your pH levels in your heating system are correct, then you won't need to use inhibitor. Now, normally in a heating system, we want our pH level to be lower than eight, as long as we're using inhibitors. But a lot of different metals are in your heating system, and a lot of different metals have different pH levels where they're stable at. So depending on whether you've got a stainless steel heat exchanger or an aluminium heat exchanger will depend upon your pH level. So technically, if your pH level's correct and your water quality's not got a lot of air in it, <laughs> so your water will have naturally air within the water from when you fill the system, but some of it will disappear. So technically, no, we don't need to put inhibitor in as long as our water quality is correct and we're testing our water quality. But because now the building regs say we've got to put inhibitor in and all the manufacturers say we need to put inhibitor in our system, then we've got to put inhibitor in our system. Unless we obviously change the way we look at water quality in central heating systems. Now, the magnetic filter was actually invented by a heating engineer called Chris Aidy back in 2003. So let's find out what's so special about these magnetic filters. So the magnetic filter is there to stop magnetite floating around the system and blocking the waterways up in the boiler and sludging up the radiators and stopping the radiators working efficiently. So what are the benefits do these filters do? Well, because your heating system isn't blocking up with magnetite, it makes it more efficient. So you need less energy to heat the water up. If it was full of magnetite, you need more energy to do that so it's saving the planet. Because of this, it's gonna lower your energy bills. So it's gonna be cheaper if your system is clean than what it would be if it's dirty. It's also gonna reduce our carbon footprint. So like I say, it's gonna save the planet because the boiler is working less hard. It also reduces greatly the risk of boiler breakdown because the water within the system is crystal clear, so it's not gonna block the boiler up, so the boiler's not gonna work as hard, so the boiler's not gonna break down as often, and it's also gonna last a lot longer. 20% of gas boilers break down every year, by the way, so you can reduce that figure by actually making sure the central heating system is serviced every year by a competent registered gas installer who has to make sure the system is clean. And also these things, if you buy them in a pack from the boiler manufacturer, they will extend the warranties due to the filters. But you've got to make sure you're using their filters to uh, get your long warranty. So, what is this magnetite then we keep talking about? So let me pull this gigantic magnet out and give it a shake. So you can see this demonstration vessel is full of magnetite. Magnetite is basically two dissimilar metals in your central heating system and you've got air flowing around there in water with no inhibitor will actually make the radiators rust and create an iron oxide which will also block the system and make this magnetite. Now then, what happens is the vessel, the bowl, is a lot bigger than the pipework it's installed on. So what it will do is, the velocity of the water going around the central heating, which is about one meter per second, which is flying around your central heating system on a normal central heating system. When the water hits this bowl, it will slow the water right the way down. So what will happen is, because the water's been slowed down, 
the heavy debris particles will drop down to the bottom and this is where a drain goes on the bottom here. But the magnetite is magnetic. It's metal at the end of the day, it's rust. So when we put the magnet into the bowl, if by magic, within a few seconds, you will see this water will clear because all that magnetite will be drawn to the magnet. So the magnetic debris will go towards the magnet and the standard debris, like your flux in your solder, will drop down to the bottom here because it's heavy particles. So it's doing two things. It's taking out the magnetite and then it's taking out the normal debris. So that's basically what new filters do. They're not just a magnet to collect the magnetite. They can also collect the debris down at the bottom here what isn't magnetic because it's slowing the velocity down. Low loss headers do the same thing as well because it's a big surface area it will reduce the velocity of the water going around the heating system and will allow the debris to drop down to the bottom. That's how these magnetic filters work and what they collect. Last thing about the filters, the installation of them and the maintenance of them. I've done loads of videos on maintenance, cleaning them and all the rest of them, so I'll put a link down in the comment section down below. But, whereas installation goes, you should always put them, best practice, on the return as close as practicable to the boiler as you can get. So this is protecting the boiler, not on the flow pipe where it would be protecting the radiators, we want to be protecting the boiler with this. So like I say, check out the links down below and uh, see about the installation and the cleaning of these things. What are the common symptoms for having sludge in your system, if you're a customer? So, has your radiator got patchy warmth? Is it like cold at the bottom and in the middle here, but warm on the sides there? Well, that's a good indication of sludge. Do some of your radiators in the house not heat up at all, whether they're upstairs or downstairs? Um, that's also could be a sign of sludge. Does your radiator need bleeding all the time and you don't know why? Um, and it's making hydrogen. Because <laughs> hydrogen is made in radiators when you've got corrosion. Two dissimilar metals make uh, electrolysis and that can also create hydrogen. So you could be getting hydrogen coming out of your radiators when you're bleeding them. So be very careful with that. Also, is your heating system or your boiler making some strange noises? Things like banging noises or even a noise like a kettle boiling. Because if your boiler's making that noise, and we do call it kettling in the industry, it means you've got lime scale inside your boiler. So it's uh, scaled up. So that is what you should be looking for if you suspect you've got magnetite or scale in your system. Now then, we've seen the symptoms of whether we've got sludge. But are there ways of actually proving there is sludge in the system without taking it all apart? Well, yeah, the first one could be if you bleed your radiator and you get dirty black water coming out of your system, then that's a sign of sludge. Like I said, if your radiators are cold in the middle and at the bottom, then that's a sign. But if you get a decent magnet, put the magnet into the centre of the radiator and it was cold at the bottom and then ends up warm at the bottom and big cold patch around the middle that's also a good sign that you've sludged up and you've drawn all the magnetite towards the magnet because this magnet will act like a magnetic filter would do and it would clear the blockages down at the bottom because it would be all drawn to the magnet so there are a couple of ways of actually proving that you've got magnetite in there and obviously all that magnetite will need to be removed before you have a new boiler installed. BS7593 which is our code of practice which tells us what we need to do to protect our central heating systems is going to now be incorporated into the building regs next year hopefully. <laughs> so We've now found out that in a central heating system, yes, we do need to install a filter. Yes, we do need to put inhibitor in 
And yes, we do need to test our central heating system water every year when we're doing a service. So, how do we do that? Well, I've done quite a few videos now on testing central heating water and I will put the links down in the description below. Not the uh, comment section like I said before, in the description. But also, we could use something like this, this AD Pro Check, which I have just done a video on and I will be releasing next week. So you'll be able to see how to use this AD Pro Check next Sunday. So, if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when I'm uploading videos. Sundays at the moment. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Don't forget the video on the project next week. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.